Hey guys, and welcome to the most self-indulgent video I could possibly make a Q&A. Because even during the literal apocalypse, I am still the center of attention. But for real, I thought I would just sit down on the floor in front of my armchair because somehow that feels cozier than sitting on my actual armchair and just chat with you guys because I feel like it has been so long since I actually just did like a chatty Q&A type video. Also, uh, I haven't had enough people to talk to recently so I kind of just want to say words out loud because I go like days and days right now without actually opening my mouth. Originally, I was gonna get hammered while filming this Q&A. I bought so much ginger beer and so many fucking limes, I look like I'm filming the sequel to Lemon Stealing Whore. I was gonna make myself a Moscow Mule, but then I realized that I am out of vodka and also my liquor store is closed. So I'm just gonna do this sober, which is probably healthier for my liver and my psyche anyway. First up, a lot of you guys ask me how I'm doing, how my mental health has been, um, because I think that it is kind of apparent in my videos that I'm falling apart a little bit. Honestly, my mental health has not been in tip-top shape, and by that, I mean I spend a lot of nights crying alone. I definitely spent the first couple months of quarantine really just like denying my own feelings because I recognized that I was so lucky to be able to work from home, to have a safe place to live, to not have to go and like risk my life every day. And I kind of like denied myself the right to more than anything that I had lost in my life because I knew I didn't have it the worst. But a couple weeks ago, I finally sat down with my journal and gave myself the time and space to just be like, angry a little bit that I fucking signed a lease in New York City a month before it would become the epicenter of a pandemic. The fact that I spent like six months isolating myself in LA, being really lonely, and then finally was like ready to turn my life around, go and hang out with people, be extroverted, and then just like none of that is possible anymore. The fact that Pretty much all of my friends have moved away from New York, uh, are living with their parents again. The fact that I was finally making strides on starting a clothing line and then just whoa bam the economy said goodbye. <laughs> I have been quarantining alone in my like 200 square foot studio in New York, so I have kind of lost any sense of reality because I'm just in this box like every single day for just months on end. I've lost a little bit of my sense of like who I am and whether time is real and days are real. A couple of weeks ago, I spent every single night just bawling about like childhood trauma and the fact that I thought I was a bad kid. So that's also been fun. Do you regret moving to New York? I live in downtown Manhattan and originally I was so determined to live here because I wanted to be like in the action. Everybody told me that when you first move to New York, you should move to Manhattan because you only get one chance to like experience this glorious first year, really being in the hustle and bustle, really experiencing New York for New York. And then just like that, living in New York kind of became like living anywhere else where you just stayed indoors, except it was slightly worse here because you also have to wear a mask all the time and can't go out quite as much because there's people everywhere. Sometimes, yeah, I'm like, fuck this. I made literally the worst decision, but at the same time, I don't blame myself at all because it's like, how could I have ever known that this would happen? Even if moving to New York probably wasn't the optimal thing to do with the past six months, it has been really good for me mentally just to have a reset. I think that I got really drowned down with like negative associations in LA. I was so stressed about my job. There were a lot of memories from like depressive episodes or just times that I was really lonely and unhappy and frustrated with myself in college. I just had a toxic relationship with myself and a toxic relationship with work and it felt really good to like completely reset to move to a new place and to feel like I got a fresh start mentally so I could create my own new associations with this apartment that is granted a problem that I have with most apartments I always think that I'm getting a fresh start wherever I move and then like nine months in I've just weighed down the apartment with so much associated stress from my job and my life and my own like internalized self-hatred that then I start projecting it onto the apartment because the apartment reminds me how much I hate myself and then I need to move out of the apartment and then I want another fresh start and then it just happens again and again but not to jinx it I have lived here for six months and I don't hate this apartment yet what are you most excited to do once New York reopens all I want to do is get fucking 
schmack and then stay up until like 6 a.m. at some club and then wander to a pizza place and get pizza and then get really fucking bloated because I am lactose intolerant and then fall asleep and wake up at like 4 p.m. the next morning. I want an excuse to dress in my best outfit and just look hot as hell. I want to make out with a stranger and not be afraid that I'm going to kill one of us with coronavirus. I want to hype girls up that I don't know in the bathroom about their outfits and give them tampons and therapy while we're all super drunk and then just part ways and continue making incredibly bad mistakes in our life and pining over men who will never like us. <sighs> I miss it. I never even cared that much about clubbing or going out before quarantine, but like, I just miss humans. I miss humans being stupid and messy and attractive. What's your most used item during lockdown besides your phone slash laptop? I think we all know. Ooh, this is a good one. How have your goals and mindset changed over the past year? I think the most recent shift I've noticed in myself is during quarantine, letting go finally of that workaholic pressure that I put on myself. I used to treat myself really, really badly so that I could work more and more and get more videos out and gain more subscribers. And I was never happy with myself. I never felt successful. And I kind of like bullied myself in my own head, telling myself that I wasn't good enough until I achieved more. My mindset now is a lot less achievement oriented and a lot more exploration oriented and just trying to figure out what I want to do next, how I can push myself, how I can create something new, um, how I can just have fun sometimes experimenting with like new mediums. I've been making some TikToks just because they're fun and it's like fun for me to try to figure out how to edit on TikTok. And I also love giving the Chinese government access to all of my data. The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. I've been taking film photos. I ordered a Super 8 camera, which I am so excited for. So I'm gonna start recording little moments from my life in Super 8 and then like reading my journal entries with them or some artsy bullshit. Put some little yellow subtitles in Futura. You know that indie film type beat that I'm trying to go for. That'll be really fun to experiment with, if not for YouTube, just for like my own personal life too. I've also been trying to do a better job of documenting some moments just for myself, because for so long, everything I've documented has been to put in a vlog, to package in some type of clickable way for the internet. And now a lot of the times when I hang out with people are really like, all of the time when I hang out with people, I am just taking a couple of photos just so I can remember it and cherish that moment. And I don't have to share it with 3 million people online. Do you miss college? I think I miss the idea of college. America does such a good job of selling you this romanticized idea of college where you're like surrounded by friends. You're so young and free. In college, I was honestly less young and free than I am now. I was just so stressed out by internships, resume building, classes, doing my YouTube channel, editing for other YouTubers. I did not have a fun college experience and I also didn't do a super good job of keeping up with people and socializing well because of social anxiety. <laughs> but I really do miss learning stuff in a structured schedule every single week and having something other than YouTube that uh, defines me as a person. Over the past year since I graduated, I started having like panic attacks about my videos. I got really perfectionistic. I just started having a much less healthy relationship with work because making a video was all I did that week. And so I had all this time to perfect it. Whereas in college, I would go to class and then in my free time, I would make a video and I try to make it as good as possible Possible. But if it wasn't 100% perfect or if it flopped a little bit, it was still okay because I had like finals week to get through or I had a test to take and I was learning and growing as a person. So I am trying now to institute a little bit more of that learning structure into my life again. I'm taking the Yale free online open course about African American history because I stupidly never took that in college. It is completely free. I will link it down below. Um, and I'll also link a uh, UCLA course on African American history if you'd prefer to take that one. After I finish that one, I wanna do one on Asian American studies. And then I think I also wanna do like game theory and some type of philosophy course and just become like a better, well-rounded person, but without the crushing pressure of paying insane tuition. Opinions on Tom Nook. I rate him six out of 10. Incredible business sense. 
very forgiving on loans. Style, kind of weak if I'm being honest. Tom Nook, step up your game. Isabel is lapping you with her outfits. If you could bring back any trend from any era, what would it be? One of my favorite eras was 2019, when you could go outside. That was fun. But my actual answer, I, hold on, let me get something. Okay. I bought these vintage patterns of 30s sleeves and look at this fucking sleeve, the little like princess poof and then it goes into a narrow sleeve with buttons on it. Are you kidding me? Have you ever questioned your sexuality? Do I have a story for you? I think I've questioned my sexuality throughout my entire life pretty much. Like I've always thought that girls are really pretty and attractive and that I would probably like want to hook up with them. But then in my brain I was like, I only want to hook up with girls because men think that it's hot for girls to be bi. And so I'm just like catering to the male gaze and I'm not actually bi because I feel like an imposter. In LA, I kind of had strong feelings for this girl that I was hanging out with and that was confusing. Around that time, I also started watching more TikToks and the algorithm immediately placed me in bi girl TikTok, which Brandon, I love, but I was like, holy shit, it only took me like five minutes on TikTok for TikTok to think that I'm bi? What is going on? Once I got to New York, I hooked up with a woman and that was cool. So that's pretty much where I'm at right now. I felt cool with it afterwards, but then we like went on a date and I felt like this weird, like almost childish like shame, even though I know that it's so chill to be bi or to be gay or to date women, I just was like scared of myself a little bit. Um, and I felt really like shaky on the ride home. So I haven't done anything since that. In quarantine, I came across this video that was this like 60 year old Christian lady. She was like, I think it's so cool how your heart is large enough to love men and women. And I think it's what God would have wanted. And I just started tearing up. I was like, holy shit. Even though I shouldn't need to hear it from a Christian woman, it felt weirdly good. Uh, and um, so it's confusing in my brain. I think right now I'm kind of just like figuring it out for myself. Um, so yeah, that's what's up. Who are your top three favorite YouTubers? Recently, I have loved Kelly Stamps. She is like Aubrey Plaza, if she were a vlogger. She's so funny. She lives in New York. So Kelly, if you're watching this, please hang out with me. Rachel Wen, who I have mentioned before, her videos are filmed in this way that's so like raw. It feels like alive and it feels like you're there with her. It's so different from any type of vlog that I've watched before. I love her so much. And thirdly, my friend Damon Dominique. I'm a little bit biased, but he has been killing it recently. His cinematography is Wes Anderson worthy. His titles and editing are so beautiful. He also does a lot of red wine talks where he just sits down with his friends and has like a 30 minute long conversation about life. He dropped like an hour long documentary about sex and drugs in the Netherlands and it is so well made. Netflix needs to hurry the fuck up and give him a travel show already. He is so talented. Do you believe in soulmates or someone who you are destined to be with? Out of 7 billion people on this planet, do you really think that you grew up five minutes from your soulmate? Sounds a little suspicious to me, but I also don't think that love is this thing that is like preordained and that when you meet somebody, you just have such good chemistry that you know you're meant to be with someone. I think that can happen, but I think more often you grow into becoming soulmates with somebody, if that makes sense. Like you grow up together, you build this relationship full of trust and love to the point where you are so intertwined or just so deeply in love that uh, you kind of made your own soulmate. Oh, look at me being romantic. I think that soulmate sometimes comes with the implication that relationships and love are easy, but it's like even after you get married to somebody who you really believe is your soulmate, there's still more work to be done. So I think relationships are just a growing and evolving thing that you have to invest in. I got a lot of questions about why I'm not with my family, and that is because I don't want to relive my childhood trauma. I got some questions about my love life. The last like proper update that I gave you guys was breaking up with my boyfriend at the time. That was like a year ago at this point. So yeah, I've like casually dated a couple people, but I'm not dating anybody right now. Um, I'm talking to a guy. 
who I kind of like. Have you watched Avatar The Last Airbender? If so, who is your favorite character? Yes, that show literally defined my childhood and I need to rewatch it now that it's on Netflix, but my favorite character was Toph. I thought that she was the coolest, baddest bee in the fucking Four Kingdoms. I wanted to be Toph so badly that I went online and I would look up these tutorials on how to unlock your bending powers. And it was like some weird shit, like you had to sit and meditate and envision in your brain like an animal and then the animal would like relate to what type of bender you were and then you had to do all these exercises to unlock your bending potential. So I did all of those and tragically I did not become an earthbender. Any plans on venturing into writing screenplays again? For those of you who don't know, I was a screenwriting concentration in school, so my thesis senior year was writing a screenplay, but like a very bad draft of a screenplay. So I've been going back, doing a little bit of editing on that, but honestly, I think it might just be better for me to start on a new screenplay. My screenplay from college was like a satire about frat boys, and I thought it was funny, but I think that I and pretty much all writers write the strongest when it's about your actual experience. And I always felt like there was a little bit of a gap where I didn't like actually know what it felt to be uh, self-conscious about your masculinity or to like have male friendships or to feel this pressure to have like a bunch of casual sex. I could kind of make fun of it and envision what it was like, but it was harder for me to come from a sympathetic place in my screenplay. So I think next I want to write a screenplay about social media, kind of like Wolf of Wall Street meets social media type of vibe. I also want to write a little coming of age film about the summer after freshman year when I went home to Maryland and a bunch of my friends did too and we all felt like super lost. For me that was like my coming of age summer and that was the first time that I felt really like loved in a friendship context. So I think that would be a sweet movie to write as well. That being said, I think the easy part about screenwriting is telling people that you're gonna write and the hard part is actually sitting down for like eight hours a day for multiple months on end to actually write a screenplay. So we'll see if I ever make it. Thoughts on fast fashion and sustainability. There's so many layers of privilege in being able to care about the environment to begin with economically in terms of, you know, buying like a $200 dress. In terms of time, if you are working multiple minimum wage jobs, you often don't actually have the time to go thrifting and to buy stuff secondhand. So buying fast fashion might really be the only affordable option for you. Also in terms of location, not everybody has access to sustainable brands that usually only have flagship stores in bigger cities or to thrift stores that are near them. You might not have a car, so you might not be able to go thrifting or be able to like return clothing if you buy a $200 dress and it doesn't fit you. I think there are so, so many factors to take into consideration. And I don't think it's ever okay to shame somebody for wearing fast fashion if you don't know their economic situation. When I talk about fashion, I have always tried to talk about a balance between things that are sustainable if you have the money to invest in it, and also options that are more affordable, might not be from the most sustainable brands, but I know are accessible to people who are in college or who are just starting out their careers because that is most of you guys. I think it can be hard and like overly politicized talking about clothing. People think that you either have to be 100% sustainable or 100% affordable, but in reality, it's all about finding a balance between the two. And lastly, I think that sustainability online has been co-opted to this like consumerist aesthetic rather than actually being sustainable. So much of the credit when talking about sustainability has gone to privileged white women to a certain extent, myself included, when in reality, the people who are being most sustainable are people who kind of abstain from consumerist culture or who live in a smaller space, take less vacations, don't drive a car, take public transit, take economy instead of business class or first class. Those are things that we don't talk about because they're not glamorous, but they are actions that mean a lot more than buying a dress from a sustainable brand. So those are my opinions. I think it's all about balance. It's all about looking at your life as a whole rather than uh, going on social media and trying to appear perfectly sustainable because I sure as hell am not. I wouldn't expect anybody else to be either. It's getting a little bit dark, so I think I will leave you guys with that. Thank you so much for chatting with me or just staring at the screen while I talk at you in the strange parasocial relationship that is YouTube. Hang in there if you guys are still in quarantine and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.